people like their stuff when it's two years old. But after about six years on board, every day you're fixing something. 300 systems is 300 things to break. Every wire, every switch. Meet Bruce and Jen. Nearly 40 years ago, they built their own wooden boat from scratch and they are still sailing that same boat today. Welcome to Boat Life is Best. Here you'll find interviews with sailors about their boats and their life on board. Ranging from family sailing to solo sailing, from absolute beginners to sailing legends, from big yachts and small boats, and from brand new to old school. If you like boat tours and conversations with sailors, definitely subscribe to the channel. It's called a Venus Catch. It's a 34 foot double ended gaff catch. It's designed by a fellow named Paul Erling Johnson, who just passed away a couple years ago. He was a very popular uh, designer of boats for hippies in the 70s. He had a bunch of them built. I think half a dozen of this one's been built. He had a 28 footer, very popular. Built a bunch of 42s, did a lot of sailing, drank a lot of rum. <laughs> so yeah, it's a wooden boat, but it's composite. Strip okay. planks. These planks are square. Okay. And it has vertical nails set in there. Lots of epoxy. Everything's laminated. Frames are seven lambs of yellow cedar. And the wood the is from when uh, Mount St. Helens in Washington State, the volcano. Okay. Yeah. Blew up and all the fir trees got knocked down and so when we moved to Washington there was a glut of this beautiful fir and that's what we a planked the boat out of. Glut. Yeah. A glut. Was cool. Lots of it. So, so you build it yourself, right? Yeah. yeah. I helped Paul Johnson to build the first one of these in 1978 when I was young. And so I was going to build a trimaran but then I came time to build the boat and I said this is what I knew how to do so we built this. Never regretted it. She's a beast. How long did it take? It took me three months to build the hull. I started lofting on December on 1st of September and I put the last plank on the boat. Some one of these up there on th American Thanksgiving 12 weeks working alone. And then it took me another year of working part-time to get her ready to launch. We launched her after 15 months. Everything was ready. The sails were made. Put the, put the mast in the, next, the day after it was launched. Mast has never been out, almost 40 years. Uh, had her rigged two days later. Took her home to our home in Gig Harbor and for Christmas. Launched her on. December 21. Okay. We were home for Christmas. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So that sounds like not a lot of time for it's a really boat like this. really fast. Really yeah. fast. Uh, I know one cruising sailor, Brent Swain, makes a steel boat. It's called Origami Boat. He's the only person I've ever, only cruiser I've ever met, boat builder I've ever met, who built a boat faster than me. And he did a 32 footer in one month. Wow. Yeah, steel. Ah. So where did the idea come from to, to build this boat? Like were you always sailing? Where, where, when did oh. the idea start to rise? How, yeah. uh, I was a dropout from the Vietnam War. Okay. I'm too young for the Vietnam War, but when I was young I was thinking I was going to be a dropout for the Vietnam War. By the time I was of the war age, the Vietnam War was over. But I was already of that mindset, so I did it anyway. I dropped out of the war, even though the war was finished. Uh, and we came down to the Caribbean. And when I was 20, got a couple little boats. Met Janie in St. Bart's in 1970-something. We lived together for a year on a 21-footer. A year on a 21-footer, anyone would want to build a bigger boat. Yeah. So that's what happened. We went back to Washington. And uh, worked on building the boat. Cool. Yeah, short answer. It was a no-brainer for me. I would never build a boat now today, 
so cheap to just pick up a fiberglass boat or something. These probably no more of these will be built. It's not practical anymore. It's difficult to find a place to build it. Difficult to find the materials. It's gotten much more expensive. We built the boat for six grand. That's Those crazy. were nine. Nice fat 1983 yeah. grands, you know, but uh, six grand. We got it sailing for like 15. Yeah. You know. Every yeah. time I paint it now, it costs more than when I planked it. Yeah. yeah. I can imagine. That's crazy. So that was 40 years ago, right? Almost. Almost. Yeah. Spring of, uh, in September, it'll be 40 years. Yeah. And you, you just told me that it's still quite the same as it was back then. Pretty much. The interior has changed because we built it in the north, but then we sailed it down in the tropics, and so it used to have closed bulkheads with the door. So it's all interior, I call it. I we know. change latitudes, we just cut some ah! out and go north and glue it back in. Yeah. Sometimes there's a door here. And we had a child on board, and so we had... Bunks have been different. De ...desks and built-in toys, like, you know, built-in little play stove for him. A lot more air alone. down here now than there yeah. ever was. Uh, very so that's airy, changed. Very mm -hmm. airy, miss. You want to see some of our idiosyncrasies? Let me show you our plumbing. Because mm -hmm. you want to see some simple stuff. Mm -hmm. This is our water intake. We have a bucket up on deck. And this is just salt water. It comes in and we wash up here. And the sink drains into a five gallon bucket. And carry it out. So no through holes for that. Super simple uh, two burner Primus. We used to have an oven. Used to, but uh, try to keep it simple now. Yeah. What's going on here? Hey, check this out. We got a moving part in the galley. <laughs> How cool is that? Closes. Cool. Yeah. Con conventional engine. It's in there. Yeah. Ta da. That's my fourth engine. I started with a couple of air colds. What else is funny down here, Jim? Uh, just because it's just so simple. There's just no complication about it. Yeah. We, no we just maker. only got a. Um, we just only started using electronic charts just a few years ago. Yeah, our paper, paper we have charts. no water maker, no fridge, no head. What else don't we have? We don't have anything. Got a lot of stuff we don't have. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever miss that, that kind of mo modernity? Mm, no. We only live on the boat six months a year okay. or, or less. Yeah. So we have all that modern inconveniences at home. And so because we leave the boat, every time we come back to it, it's a transition. And everything has to be, it takes a lot of time, it has to be maintained. And the more junk is more junk to break, more junk to maintain. People like their stuff when it's two years old, but after about six years on board, every day you're fixing something. 300 systems is 300 things to break. Every wire, every switch. Anyway, so we wanted to minimize all that stuff. Got a windlass. Got an electric windlass. Yeah, we've kind of gone modern now. Yeah. Oh, and here's a story. We got the windlass when we turned 80. So, when we, I think maybe before we got the boat launched even, we bought two little El Toros, their little plywood prams. Okay, yeah. And this is one of them and we sold the other one and this has been my dinghy for 45 years. Well, not quite. Almost. Almost. Long time. Mm. It's been my dinghy. And um, I'm about to have a big birthday this weekend and so not because of that but it, it's just become a hazard to have a plywood dinghy when you take it to a big dock all the inflatables yeah. squish it. Yeah. And Or they'll push it and it gets stuck under the dock and there's not many beaches to pull it up on anymore. So we're on, on our way to St. Martin to buy our first ever inflatable dinghy with the engine. We've ne I've, never, I've never used one before. <laughs> wow. So that'll be interesting. Yes. Other than the uh, one that made pina coladas. Yes, <laughs> under the, uh, except for that one. Pina colada upward. Uh, the first, first motorized dinghy. Yeah. yeah. And the other dinghy that we have up on deck. Yeah, I saw you uh, working on it. It was built here in Beckley 45 years ago 
when back then they were um, building a big schooner for Bob Dylan, the musician, okay. here on the beach, and Bruce was helping build another boat here. You call him a musician? Well, that's what people call him. Oh. And uh, anyway, a friend of ours had the dinghy built, and we ended up getting it about 15, 20 years ago or something. Cool. And keeping it alive because it was yeah. Right now, so yeah. So you're happy with with little actually, yeah. But f coming from the twenty twenty one foot boat, it must have uh, been quite an upgrade. Lots of room. Yeah. Boat goes faster. Yeah. This one doesn't leak. Three things we don't have to do anymore: steer, navigate, pump. Okay. It's so easy sailing a boat around anymore, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody can do it. Yes, that's true. That's true. This boat's a good boat. We've done a lot of offshore um, big trips, and we always find bad weather. We've been in a hurricane at sea. Um, we've had some. We took a total knockdown up in the Gulf Stream. It's a slow boat, so we can't outrun the weather, like a more modern boat or a multi-hull or even a regular fast boat. So a slow boat has to be strong because yeah. it takes licks. When we took the knockdown in the Gulf Stream, yeah. our son was only two and a half or something, and he was sleeping here. Take a warm beer? Oh, no, thank you. With um, bunk boards and stuff, and... Bruce, that's a sliding hatch, and yeah. Bruce had just opened the hatch at like 7 in the morning, and as he did that, that's when the boat, we believe that mast tip touched the water, and 100 gallons of water poured in, and we thought we'd been, that we'd hit something, yeah. and stuff was washed off the deck. I didn't have that cool closing galley then, Yeah. and we didn't have that door. <laughs> no. Let me show you what happened. A bottle of ketchup flew from here, this is not ketchup, and it went up in here and it hit the overhead, left a good, pretty good gash here, and broke glass and there was ketchup everywhere. <laughs> we're very lucky, e it, very lucky it wasn't hot sauce, everything but that was the strength, the a bottle of ketchup went from here and broke on the wood overhead. Which was an overhead, not was flying in that direction. But yeah, that wow. was a lot of violence. All of our pumps got jammed up by all the debris that was under the water. That and we, when we couldn't walk around without cutting broken, our feet. Broken glass. Yeah, we had to put broken our shoes. And on then the worst part, at, right when it happened, was all the bunk boards from over there flew over here. Em that side of the boat emptied onto this side. Yeah, and our little toddler was over here and he was screaming and he was under the blankets were all because <laughs> it was up north and it was like do we save him do we save ourselves I mean there was just so much to do all at once and yeah. so we went and found him and you know made sure he wasn't gonna fly loose and did we we found him we found him yes. <laughs> he was Which might be why he doesn't like sailing anymore. yeah <laughs> Thanks for helping us relive this. Jason. Yeah, this, this is wonderful. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So, have you ever thought, this is it? We're gonna sell the boat. I'm gonna live full time on that. No. No. Never. No. no. Not yet. I hope we. I well, hope that we say it. Cause we have a lot of friends who are older than we are, and sometimes they let they hang on to their boat too long. We have a few friends who are older than we are. Most of them. And we hope that we'll be able to pick the right time to say, okay, that's. It's enough. That was a good run, let's be done. Yeah. And not be irresponsible and keep it beyond the time that we can handle it. Because it's, it feels like a bigger boat than it used to sometimes. Yeah, I could do the smaller boat, but I'm not going to make that change. So what's up the front? got your ergonomically designed sea bucket <laughs> and press is just fuel and stuff up here just waterproof cabin cool. fuel chain windless that's about it this is really handy because it's got a little door here yeah. so we don't have to walk through the cabin with a bucket of duty you know we can yeah. stand here and yeah true yeah 
So, no more seacocks up here. No toilet to maintain. This was 148 year old fir tree. It was 27 inches in diameter. This is the 80 years of the inside. And this grew about 100 feet from where we built the boat. Yeah. And the mizzen also. Well, the mizzen was more than 100 feet away. It was like 125 feet. <laughs> did, you, did you just pick it? Like this could be a good master. No, what happened was we had these trees in our yard, <clears throat> four big trees. And I built the boat and built the house and I had a car sitting there and I said, Jesus, we had a windy day. One of these days this tree's gonna fall down and it's gonna hit one of some of our stuff. So I had a guy take them down. And then when I started cutting them f for wood, I realized this might make nice mess. So I ripped them down with a chainsaw and turned out it made a nice mast. Yeah. No, we didn't know it was going to be the mast when we started. So how many miles would you say you've sailed with the boat? 75, 70. Sounds like a lot, but the, I've been sailing it for a long time. So you yeah. add up 35 years of 2,000 miles a year, 70,000 yeah. miles. Yeah. We had a couple of years sailing 10. A lot of years sailing five. Yeah. Lately, a thousand miles a year. This is our engine controls. Don't see this very often. This is forward, neutral, reverse. There's the throttle, and that's stop. And the panel, of course, is below. I just don't want it getting salty all the time. But this works well. Regular tiller, yep. pin rail, locker up, generator, vision sheet. You don't see it like this anymore. No, there's a lot of good reasons. Yeah. This is the same batch of wood as Bob Dylan's schooner was built out of. Same time frame. Cool. And that's the tree from the yard. Yep. Collect water. So, yeah, right in the bucket and then from the bucket. Yep. Or we can put it straight into the jug or something if we want. So smart. Sometimes we chuck the food, we put it into the dinghy. The dinghy stays clean. Yeah. And then we can really splish splash, take a bath. You take a bath in the dinghy. Oh, yeah. Do you still have a lot of work maintaining it? Like with the. With Every boat's work maintaining it. Yeah. Uh, and there's a bit more in this because it's, she's getting old. Yeah. She's all galvanized fastened. That was uh, then. So that's catching up with me now. But the epoxy adds a lot of credibility to the. Storing the boat inside. Yeah, it helps. To give. 